Hi, my name is Mr. Harris, President and CEO of Renaissance Youth Center, and we're back again today with RYC STEM Review. And I have one of our STEM instructors here, and please introduce yourself. My name is Rohit. Uh, Rohit, tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, I'm a robotic engineer, make robots and uh, tinker a lot. Uh, I teach the coding and robotics classes here at Renaissance Youth Center, and uh, here today to talk to you about parts of a computer. Bingo! Parts of the computer. Now that's a biggie. Tell us what you got in front of you, sir. So this is a bit of an older PC. This is the a desktop style PC that you'd find in a home. Uh, you put this up by your desk, hence why it's called a desktop PC. Um, main advantage to that is you can put bigger components inside of it compared to a laptop. Mm. You can get more power, more speed, and this is meant for stationary computing, whereas a laptop you'd want to carry around with you and be more portable. Mm -hmm. So what, uh, what's on the inside? So I'm assuming that we call this the shell. Right, so this is the case, we, uh, is what we refer to it as, case. Um, right here underneath this giant fan is your CPU, is your primary processing unit. That's what does all the math and calculations that you're do when you're doing operations on your computer. Mm -hmm. After that, underneath it, you have the motherboard. The motherboard is kind of like the, the brain or this, uh, this, uh, Final cord of the of the machine. It connects all of the components together. Yep. And makes allows them to communicate with each other. Um, after that, we have our graphics card here. This is a smaller graphics card than what you might see nowadays. The, the graphics cards that we see nowadays are really beefy and really powerful. Mm. But um, it lets you do graphical comp computations. Really good at fast calculations. So with the AI boom that's happening right now, graphics cards are flying off the shelf because for AI calculations, graphics cards are perfect for that. Oh, I see. Um, here we have the hard drive. That's where all of your, your files are stored. So any kind of photos, videos, applications that you've installed on your computer, it lives right here. And um, up next is these little thin sticks of RAM here. I can pull one out for you. Mm -hmm. These are RAM sticks, stands for random access memory. RAM sticks are for really fast storage. So when you're opening programs, you load the program onto your RAM. So yeah. while you're using it, it's really fast. But then for long-term storage, you put it on your hard drive and right and so thank you for breaking that out because a lot of times we don't know the difference of what a ram does versus what the hard drive does right so one is this is your long-term storage right <laughs> yes and you would say this is storing while you're working is that a nice way of breaking that down right so, so if the way you can think about it is if you're cooking a meal mm. well you bring all of your ingredients ahead of time and put them on the table so you have them ready to access so with files, when you're opening a program, it loads all the files that you need onto your RAM so that they're ready to access really fast. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So, wow, you just popped that out of there. So if somebody's RAM went bad, mm -hmm. it was just that easy? Take this yep. few screws off and just replace it? No screws, actually. It's just these, to, take, to take this off. Well, right? take the, take the yeah. back panel off the mm -hmm. screws. But um, there's two clips here that you just pop out, yeah. and it slides into the slot and locks into place. Boop, bop. Boom, just that easy, just that <laughs> simple. And I look like the hard drive is just as easy as well. Yeah, the hard drive actually is just two cables. This wide, wider one is power. The thinner one is for data. I can get that out. So now, are these two fans? Yeah, so cooling is really important when it comes to uh, uh, computers because the components get hot really quickly as you're using them. So the, the more intense tasks that you're using, the more electricity that your components draw, that electricity creates friction as it's passing through your computer and it creates, causes your components to heat up. Got so you have to keep your co components cool, otherwise they could overheat and, and melt down, which you really want to avoid. So there's one big fan here in front of the, the processor. So if I was to take this off, you could see the processor die underneath. Um, but here's another fan. This fan is sucking air out of the machine. So all the hot air that's getting collected inside the machine is getting blown out the back of the case. So how does the computer know when to run the fan? Is there like a temperature gauge in here as well? Yes, so there's internal temperature sensors so you can monitor what each uh, the component, the temperature of each component is. So like there's one for the processor, one for the graphics card, one for the hard drive. It'll tell you how hot everything's running. And as it gets hotter and hotter, the fan will speed up. I see. And is this also upgradable? I mean... Yes, so um, nice thing about desktops is all the parts come out and you can upgrade them, whereas in like laptops they tend to be soldered in and a lot harder to uh, remove. But um, something like this, this is about 10 years old, so you're limited by what's in it in terms of what you can upgrade to. Ah, but if you wanted to, you could, you could upgrade your processor, right? Yes. Upgrade your RAM, your hard drive, right. and, and if you fell in love with this shell and didn't want to get rid of it, right? Um, we call it the casing, you'd be, you'd be good to go. Right. What I do love about how they made these back in the day, you want to turn these around and show them 
like your access points, you know. Yeah, um, so you have a ton of ports in the front, a bunch of USB ports, audio, microphone jack. There's even a CD drive, which you don't see very much right, of it nowadays. Right, 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 right. I guess you don't really need it, sort of, kind of. Yeah. Do you store anything, like, physically anymore, or you just, everything's in the cloud for you? Uh, I tend not to store. The, only, the closest thing I did physical storage is, like, SD cards and flash drives. Um, I tend not to work with DVDs anymore. I do have a USB DVD drive at home for the occasional piece of software that comes on a DVD. Yeah. Um, like old versions of Windows, for example, you can mm. get them on DVD still, but yeah. um, for the most part, not really. Don't laugh at me. I still have, besides using the SD, I use the cloud as well. I still store things on a hard drive. I still store things on floppy, <laughs> right? Well, so like MPC, you, you music lovers, uh, everything was on, um, on a floppy. So I still have my whole kit and caboodle of those things. But stuff that I'm near and dear to, I, I like to store it and put it in the drawer, man. I don't trust the cloud. Yeah, it's fair. It's, it's always good to get back, have physical backups of everything. Yeah. It's good. It's good practice to have backups for sure. Now you talked about the cooling. So if you turn this around again, where you showed me the fan, and I don't, I'm, I'm putting you on the spot a little bit. One of the things I keep hearing about AI is that the more faster, the bigger the AI is, that it's going to take up so much water hmm. for cooling. Yeah. What, what does that mean? So um, you can see this, and you can. If you've seen a radiator in a car, yeah. it works the same exact way um, for uh, high level uh, data centers and AI centers. So they actually have cooling systems that run through and run water through the, the servers and the water will cool down, they'll take away heat from the components and then get cooled down in a radiator down, down the line. Um, a big problem with data storage centers and AI is that you need to keep, keep things cool. So they have uh, industrial grade AC units so that they keep the temperature of the room down and then also have the water cooling systems that you're talking about that would take a lot of water to pump through the system to cool it down. When they say a lot of water, what are they talking about, a whole reservoir? I mean, realistically the speaking, Ocean, like, <laughs> realistically speaking, it's it's a set reservoir that's in a closed system. Mm. So once you've filled it up, you don't need to fill it up again very often because the water's not going anywhere. It's a closed system, so even if it was to evaporate, it would just get collect back in the system, right? Gotcha. So uh, it's a one-time fill thing, but Typically, it's just that the amount of water for that large system yeah. would be a very large amount of water. That reservoir would be very large. Yeah, that's what I've been told. Yeah. All right. So if you have a laptop, and I guess iPads are the same way, same kind of components are in the laptop and the iPad that you have in this desktop? So the same concept. You have a, you have a storage unit, you have a processor, you have a hard drive, and uh, you have a motherboard as well. Um, but you won't see things like a physical hard drive like this. You would see st flash storage. Right. So they stored on chips instead. Same, same kind of storage that you see in flash drives. Right. Same, that would be that kind of storage. Uh, processors are a little bit smaller, not as fast. Um, y these processors and PCs are much higher draw. Mm. So you can do a lot more with them. But that's not to say that a mobile processor is slow. Nowadays, they're really fast too. Uh, but they're a little bit smaller and they're built for mobile. So look, um, I hope you guys are walking away with a little bit better understanding about how computers work, not just the fact that you use them, um, but understanding what it means about your RAM and your CPU and your hard drive. And listen, you can probably do this stuff yourself, you know, um, so don't be afraid of it. You know, any last bit of tips you want to give anyone who may want to say, hey, you know what, I'm going to try to update my RAM. So it's, I like to, to liken it to adult Legos. It's a lot easier than you would think to put together a computer. Um, I've, I've helped people build their own PCs from the ground up. I built mm. the one in middle school myself. Mm. Um, it's, it's really just putting the pieces together. Do your research online. YouTube is a great resource for uh, tutorials on how to do specific upgrades. So if yeah. you wanna upgrade your RAM, just Google how to upgrade my RAM for, um, for this type of PC and you'll find tons of videos online and you can do it all yourself. It's really not that hard. Yep. Stay tuned here. Maybe, maybe we'll have some students rebuild a computer right here on RYC STEM Review. All right, stay tuned.